Hey everyone, Graham from Boosted Performance here. We're in the Paragon Dyno Cell with our GR Corolla that we just picked up, and we're going to be doing some intake testing today. First, what we're gonna do is get this car back to the stock tune. So we've actually already been tuning this car with Ecutech, just with completely stock parts, both 91, 93, and some ethanol blending, just to kind of get a feel for how it tunes and see what we can do with it with no mods. Our friends over at Even Turi set us their intake and asked if we could test it here before the launch, and that's what we're gonna do today. So this is a very amazing intake. We use these on C8 Corvettes here at Paragon. I've got one on my RS3, which picked up a lot of horsepower. So we're really excited to see what it can do for the GR Corolla here. So I wanna talk a little bit about the stock intake, airbox, how it works, some interesting things that we've discovered about it. And then we'll kind of talk about this. We'll do some baseline tests back on the stock tune. And then we'll put this intake on, no tune changes whatsoever. And we'll just data log it and see what we see. The nice thing with the Ecutech is that we can data log it right now. We can actually see quite a bit of sensor data as this engine has some interesting things. It actually has um, inlet pressure, so we can see how much basically vacuum is being created before the turbo and to see if that this lessens that restriction. We've also got uh, pre-intake temp, post-intake temp, boost pressure, and basically everything else we could possibly need to really see how well this is working. And of course, the dyno will tell us the horsepower and what that's gonna be. The factory air box, has this small kind of little snorkel on it, which connects to a hole up here in the front of the bumper. Very cool thing about this car is almost every single duct and every single opening on this car has an actual purpose and a function. And this little guy right here does feed some fresh air into this tube, which goes into the air box. The problem is it's a pretty small opening, especially if we start raising the boost pressure. Toyota's solution for that is a little flap in the bottom of the air box that's opened up by this vacuum solenoid. Interestingly, they didn't choose to open it until about 4,200 RPMs, even though the engine can make full boost quite a bit sooner. So as we were tuning this car on the stock intake, we noticed quite a bit of a restriction to the inlet pressure until that flap opens. And then when the flap opens, it actually draws in hot air from down behind the radiator. Again, kind of a weird design, but that's how Toyota did it. Fresh, cool air up here, and then opens up the bottom at higher load to allow it to breathe. So other than that, pretty standard airbox design, panel filter in there. We've got the typical corrugated tube there, which is gonna disrupt the airflow a little bit. So everything with the new intake should be quite a bit better. It incorporates this duct here that basically mates up with the filter section and is gonna make sure that it grabs some fresh air from between the hood and also they incorporate a piece that comes down here lower into the grill and it's gonna scoop some air from there and kind of help feed this duct. So this should reduce the intake temps quite a bit, which is always helpful on a turbo car and allow it to breathe quite a bit better. But let's get into the testing and see what it does.
All right, so the testing's all done. Uh, we baselined the car. I did several runs to make sure everything was consistent, and we ended up at, today on the dyno, 266 horsepower and 283 torque. We are running the car in all-wheel drive. This is a link dyno, so we can do that just fine. No problem with torque split or any of that stuff. So these are accurate numbers in my opinion. Compared to what we see on the internet, it's generally anywhere between 260 to 270, maybe 275. I do have 91 octane in here right now because I've been testing my 91 octane custom tune to make sure that it's super happy and knock free. So this is possibly why it's a little bit lower than some dynos, but nevertheless, 266 today was the baseline. We installed the Eventuri intake and ran it again several runs and we ended up at 284 horsepower and 278 torque. Technically, the torque number seems a little bit lower. There's a couple spots here in the power band where it kind of traded. But for the most part, it's pretty similar in power and torque all the way until about 5,000, 5,500. And then we can tell that at that point, the stock air box is a restriction and the Eventuri is letting it breathe a little bit better and did pick up 15 to 16 horsepower for quite a bit of the power band. Interestingly, at the very top of the power band, the ECU is actually closing the throttle. We'll get into a whole discussion about tuning on these as I've, as I've kind of learned how this ECU works. I've discovered that it's very interesting and it does like to close the throttle pretty often under certain conditions. And basically what I would say here is this intake is working so well, at least in these conditions on the dyno, that it did actually close the throttle up top. But it is certainly reducing the restriction. Um, the other important thing that I'm, I'm looking at, because for the time being, the ECU has to be operate in open loop fueling, which means that as soon as you go full throttle, the AFR is just sort of looked up and targeted, but not necessarily trimmed full time. Because these ECUs still operate that way, possibly in the future we can move them to a closed loop fueling, but because of how they operate now, it's important to make sure that the MAF housing and the MAF reading is accurate and very similar to stock, otherwise you could change your air fuel ratios. And so we measured at the tailpipe and thankfully we found that the air fuel ratios are very similar pretty much all the way through the power band. The Eventuri actually runs a little bit leaner kind of in the mid-range, but that's still a very safe AFR for this engine and for what we're doing here. So all in all, I would say it's a very good intake. What I noticed on the dyno compared to stock is that my intake air temperatures are much lower compared to running it with the stock air box. Again, because of that flap and because of pulling that hot air in, it actually hurts the performance of the car a little bit when the intake temperatures are that high. So this is getting nice ambient air. Basically the air temperature is always what's in the room at all times in this, which is impressive. And then I mentioned earlier that we have the ability to see the turbo inlet pressure, basically how much vacuum exists in the inlet. And I can see it is reduced, especially at low RPMs because we're not relying on that flapper door opening. And most of the way through the power band, and all the way to Redline, there is a good reduction in the inlet vacuum, meaning that the turbocharger can get more air. So all in all, fantastic intake, love the design, love where it's getting the air from, and it does make some nice extra power. The key here is gonna be, as we tune these cars, we can really utilize this intake to make even more power. But that's for another video. We're gonna go ahead and flash it and do some tuning while we're here tonight, but stay tuned. We'll do some more videos on that when we get to it.